Let us pray. Lord, you give your son as a food to those you anoint with your spirit. Help them to fulfill your, your law by living in freedom as your children. May they live in holiness and be your witnesses to the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the beautiful prayers that we are about to recite, we reflect on Mary as a young woman, receiving the Lord's summons to dedicate her life to him in a very particular way, a way that would involve the generous gift of herself, her womanhood, her motherhood. Imagine how she must have felt. She was filled with apprehension, utterly overwhelmed at the prospect that lay before her. The angel understood her anxiety and immediately sought to reassure her, do not be afraid, Mary. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. It was the Spirit who gave her the strength and courage to respond to the Lord's call. It was the Spirit who helped her to understand the great mystery so it was to be accomplished through her. It was a spirit who enfolded her with love and enabled her to conceive the Son of God in her womb. This scene is perhaps a pivotal moment in the history of God's relationship with his people. During the Old Testament, God revealed himself partially, gradually, as we all do in our personal relationships. It took time for the chosen people to develop their relationship with God. The covenant with Israel was like a period of courtship, a long engagement. Then came the definitive moment, the moment of marriage, the establishment of a new and everlasting covenant. As Mary stood before the Lord, she represented the whole of humanity. In the angel's message, it was as if God made a marriage proposal to the human race. And in our name, Mary said, yes. In fairy tales, the story ends here, and all life live happily after. In real life, it is not so simple. For Mary, there were many struggles ahead, as they lived out the consequences of the yes, that she had given to the Lord. Simeon prophesied that this word would pierce her heart. When Jesus was 12 years old, she experienced every parent's worst nightmare when for three days a child went missing. And after his public ministry, she suffered the agony of witnessing his crucifixion and death. Throughout her trials, she remained faithful to her promise, sustained by the spirit of fortitude, and she was gloriously rewarded. Dear young people, we too must remain faithful to the years that we have given to the Lord's offer of friendship. We know that he will never abandon us. We know that he will always sustain us through the gifts of the spirit. Mary accepted the Lord's proposal in our name. So let us turn to her and ask her to guide us as we struggle to remain faithful to the life-giving relationship that God has established 
with each one of us. She is our example and our inspiration. She intercedes for us with her son, and with her mother's love, she shields us from harm. Angelus Domino Nunziavit Mariae. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu, Jesus. Ecce Angela Domini. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus Tecum, Benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu, Jesus. Et verbum caro factum est. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus Tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tu, Jesus. Ora pro nobis sancta Dei genitrix. Oremus gratiam tum quesmus domini mentibus nostis in funde, ut quia angelo nunciante Christi filitu incarnazione coniovimus, per passionem eus et crucem, ad resurrectionis gloriam per ducamur, per iundem Christum dominum nostrum. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritu et Sancto, Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritu et Sancto. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritu et Sancto. Requiem eternam dona est Domine. Requiescant in pace. Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritu et Sancto. 